the penal experience in Genesis chapter 32 and verse 22 to 32. The penal experience, Genesis 32 from verse 22 to 32, and I'll read. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maid servants, and his 11 sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the, when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wretched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob answered, what is your name, Jacob? He answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. May God bless his word. Amen. In Genesis chapter 32 to chapter 36, we read of the story of this man called Jacob and his family known as, uh, famously known as uh, Jacob the Schemer. He's known as Jacob the Schema. These chapters record several crucial experiences in Jacob's life as he made his way from Laban's house to Bethel. They give us three vivid pictures of this man who illustrates for us the conflict between the flesh and the spirit, the old life and the new, and, and the new life. I know we know, all of us we know about Jacob. Jacob was a, a son of Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham. And he begat Jacob. And Jacob begat these two twins. Um, uh, um, no, he, he, Isaac. He begat Isaac, and Isaac begot these two twins, uh, Jacob and Esu. So we are going to uh, uh, concentrate on one called Jacob. And we will see how he illustrates to us the conflict between the flesh and the spirit and, the, and between the new life and the old life. Jacob the wrestler. Jacob the wrestler, that is found in Genesis 32, 1 to 20. Esu was coming and Jacob was about to meet him, to meet up with his forgotten past. Will Esu forgive him or fight him? Will he lose everything he had schemed to acquire? Jacob was at a very desperate 
moment because he was just about to meet his twin brother, the one he had stolen blessings from. One, uh, Esu sold to him his birthright. And two, he himself stole the blessings of Esu and he ran away to go to his uncle's uh, home. Um, to go to his uncle's home. So he stayed in his uncle's home. His uncle was called Laban, the brother to his mother. So he stayed in that home. And the reason why he went there, his mother assisted him to flee to that place so that he can get a wife from his own family. And that is where he stayed for for around 20 years. And in these 20 years, many things happened. And a time came when he was going back home to meet his brother, Esu. And if you read these chapters very well, you will realize that after Jacob had stolen the blessings from his brother, Esu, he wept bitterly. And he wanted to kill his brother. So this is a time of desperation in the life of Jacob because he has to go and meet his brother. He's so helpless. He's so fearful. He doesn't know what will happen. And a lot was going out in his mind. How tragic it is when the past catches, catches up with sinners, it is very tragic when the past catches up with us and we become very helpless. We do not know what to do. We do not know where to go, but there we are and we need a helper. That is what happened to this man called Jacob. Geography could not erase Jacob's past nor could 20 years of history change it. Sin is sin. And the Bible says it is only God who can erase our sins through a washing us with his blood. When Jacob uh, stole from his brother, he ran away to go to a distant land, thinking maybe that could change his brother's attitude towards him. He stayed there for many years. These were 20 years. Uh, the first seven years, he worked for his first wife. The second year was the wages. He worked to get uh, his second wife, uh, Ryan. And the six other years, he worked so that he can get uh, the flock from his uncle. So all these years could not erase what had happened in the life of Jacob, could not erase the sin. Before, but before Jacob met Esau, he experienced, he experienced three other meetings. One, he met the angels. He met the angels. And that is found in Genesis 32, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Jacob also went on his way, and the angels of the Lord met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is the camp of God. So he named, he named the, that, that place Mahaniam, Mahaniam. That is where he met the angels of the Lord on his way back home. He had first seen these angels at Bethel in chapter 28. They should have been a constant reminder to Jacob that God is in control, but he failed to put his faith in God who promised uh, years ago to protect him. In chapter 28, when uh, Jacob was coming from his father's 
a home running to his uncle's place, he reached a place called Beth Bethel, and he was tired. So he lay his head there. While sleeping, he saw a stairway that connected heaven and earth. And on the stairways, angels were ascending and descending. And upward the stairway was the throne of God. And as he had this dream, sleeping on the ground, the Lord on his throne declared the blessings of Abraham to Jacob. And he promised in verse 15 that he was going to protect him. He will never leave him alone. But this man, uh, in spite of this uh, promise, this declaration from God, he had seen God from his own throne, he still could not believe in him. He still could not believe in God's promises. He still could not believe that God was going to uh, uh, protect him even from Esu, his brother. Jacob started trusting himself and his own schemes again. He tried to appease Esu with gifts. This man sent gifts ahead of him so that he can appease his brother. This, is, this was the arm of flesh. Because God had promised Jacob that he will never leave him. He is going to protect him. Jacob himself had seen these angels in the stairway, and God had assured him of the protection. He had met the army, this army of angels again, but still he could not believe in the protection of God. He trusted his arm of flesh. So he divided his company into two bands. That is found in verse 7, Genesis 32, and ignored the protecting army of angels. Then after taking these steps in carnal confidence, he prayed to God for help. He had even forgotten the way God had protected him in Laban's house. After he did what he knew in his own mind, after he divided uh, his company in twos, he knew that uh, just in case one of this company is destroyed, I'll remain with another. He did that in his own mind. And the reason why he was doing that is because of the arm of flesh. This man had refused completely to hearken to the spirit of the living God and even to uh, uh, believe in this mighty God that he was going to protect him. Even when he was in Laban's house, he schemed there also. And when Laban discovered that he had run away, he pursued him. Laban, his uncle, was very much annoyed and he wanted to kill him. If you read Genesis chapter 31 and verse 24, you will see this. God came to Laban at night and cautioned him and told him, do not say anything good or bad about uh, to Jacob. So even as he pursued him when he met him, and when they were exchanging, he told him, were it not that God had spoken to me, I will have finished you. Things will not have been good. Laban told him like that. So that one was an indication that God was uh, giving Jacob protection wherever he went as he had spoken. But still, Jacob could not believe in the mighty power of God, in the protection of the Lord. And he continued walking in the arm of the flesh. He continued walking and doing things in his own strength. In number two, the Bible says he met the Lord in verse 21 to 26. It is when we get 
alone with God that good things begin to happen. Christ came to wrestle with Jacob and struggled and the struggle lasted all night. This man now, after he had sent his camp, he has sent all his family away. He had told them to move ahead. He remained alone. And in this remaining alone, he happened to meet with God himself now. God came and met with him. And the Bible says, Christ came to wrestle. The Bible says a man wrestled with him the whole night. And this man is believed to be God himself who was wrestling with him. Keep in mind that Jacob was not wrestling to uh, get a blessing from God. Rather, he was defending himself and refusing to yield. This man was not wrestling with God so that God may bless him. He was wrestling because he didn't want to yield to God. He didn't want to yield to the Holy Spirit of the living God. He didn't want to be led by God. So God wrestled with him the whole night. The Lord wanted to break Jacob and bring him to the place where he will honestly say, not I, but Christ. That is what Paul has said in Galatians 2 and verse 20. That it is not I who lives, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So this struggle between a, a Jacob and God himself is portraying how sometimes we as believers, we have continued even to struggle and to wrestle with God. God wants us to live a life that is completely dependent on him. But we have continually walked in flesh. We have continually walked in our mind and did things according to the way we feel they should be. And most of the times, that is why we are failing. Because the Bible says, the arm of flesh will fail you. All night long, Jacob defended himself and refused to surrender or even admit that he had sinned. This man refused completely. That is why that wrestling was continuing uh, throughout the night because he was resisting God. He wanted to be by himself. He believed in his own might and strength to fight the battle. Then God weakened him and instead of scheming for a blessing or bargaining for a blessing, he asked God for the blessing. So this man, when he realized that God is overpowering him, he now came down and asked God to bless him. And for sure, God blessed Jacob at that time when he surrendered. Number three, he met himself. That is verse 27 to 32. We don't truly see ourselves until first we see the Lord. What is your name? Verse 17, God asked him. This was the question that forced Jacob to confess his true self. And he said, Jacob, the schemer. This man all along was known for scheming. He lived by scheming. Wherever he went, he was a schemer. And scheming comes out of our own wisdom as men and our own intelligence. So this man said, Jacob, the schemer. Once he faced himself and confessed his sin, 
Jacob could be changed. God gave him a new name, Israel. And this name means prince with God or, or a God-governed man. That is the new name that Jacob received from the name, the schema, Jacob. He receives a new name called Israel. And this name means prince with God or a God-governed man. This man was now broken. He was now surrendered to God. He had now allowed God to govern him. He had now allowed God to lead him throughout his life because the eye of the Lord, since when Jacob was in his mother's womb, the eye of the Lord was on him. God, God wanted to use him mightily to be a blessing to many and even to be a blessing to me and you today. Praise the Lord. The way to have power with God is to be broken by God. That is the only way. The only way to have power with God is to be broken by God. God also gave him a new beginning and a new power as he began. Walk, as he began walking in spirit and not in flesh. This was illustrated by a new walk. For now Jacob limped. He now walked as he limped because his tendon was broken by God. And even as he was going to meet, he had the courage. Initially, he was very fearful. But after God broke him, after he allowed God to lead him, he allowed God to come into his life and take his life the way he wanted, is when he had the courage to go and meet his furious brother, Esu. And he went limping, but not in weakness, but in the power of the living God. Praise the Lord. Verse 31 indicates the drowning of a new day. As the sun rose and Jacob limped out to meet Esu with God's help. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I will read to you. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16 says, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Praise the Lord. This is the brief story of this man called Jacob. A man who persistently walked in flesh. And yet God had called him and set him apart right from the womb. And God wanted to use him in a mighty way. I'm just wondering if Jacob will not have surrendered to God where we will be today. Because he became the father of the great nation that we hear of Israel. That is the whole uh, making that God was passing this man through because he was looking at him as a man he wanted to use in a mighty way. And he wanted to use him through his generation. That is why we have even the church today, because this man finally surrendered and his whole generation was blessed. And this is the nation of Israel. God set this nation apart for his own use, his own glory. The nation of Israel, the offsprings, the offsprings of Jacob. This was the generation of Jacob and God had set them apart. If this man will not have broken that time, could be we will not be here today talking about what we are talking today because that is where salvation came from. 
because this man allowed himself to be broken by the Lord. One lesson we learn from this story is that our blessings are in the arms of our parents. Our blessings are in the arms of our parents. Our parents carry our generational blessings. We have different kinds of blessings. But this kind of blessing that Jacob received from the Lord is a blessing that is generational. A blessing that was to pass through his generation uh, many, many, many years. This man entered into the hall of fame. All people, even us when we pray, we pray the Lord of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He became very powerful. He became a patriarch for us and even for the entire nation of Israel. His generation was blessed. And out of his generation, that is where our Lord Jesus Christ came from. And that is why we are born again today. We have been set free from sin because this man broke and surrendered to be used of God in that mighty way. Praise the Lord. And I want to tell us that each one of us is carrying blessings for their generations. You are seated here not for yourself. Sometimes the enemy blinds us. We do things carelessly thinking that it is all about me. Who is seeing me? It is not about other people. That is why some people say my dress, my choice. They think they are all alone. You are not all alone. You are representing your generation. And it is through you that the blessings will come through your generation. There are some things you are doing today that are going to hinder blessings in your generation. Praise the Lord. There are things we are doing today that are going to kill our generation completely. And if this man will not have surrendered to God, his entire generation will have been destroyed at that point. God is calling us a brethren. God is calling us as individuals. He's calling us as a church to break to allow him to break us. Jesus Christ broke his body on the cross of Calvary because of me and you. And he wants us to break before him and allow him to lead us, to guide us, and to use us to bring impact in this generation and in many generations to come. Behind each one of us, we have a very long generation. You are standing in for many, many generations to come. And the things you do today will determine whether your generation will walk in the blessings of God or will walk under a curse or will be destroyed forever. God is calling us to break. At this point, I don't know what your name is. God asked Jacob, what is your name? What is your name? And God is asking each one of us today, what is your name? Could be you know the name people have been calling you, or could be you do not know. But deep inside you, you know your name. You know who you are. Jacob was a schemer. He gave him a new name, and this is the name Israel. And this is a name that we still talk about today, the powerful name that God gave to this man called Jacob. God wants to give each one of us a new name. God wants to give us a new name. In his presence, our names must change. In his presence, we must break. We must allow God to break us. We must allow the names of flesh 
to go and receive spiritual names, names that are going to bring great impact in our lives and in our generations. God is calling each one of us to surrender to him and allow him to break us. This penal experience is not the best experience for any other person to go through the penal experience. It is the best experience because even Jacob himself said, Jacob himself said, so Jacob called the place Peniel saying, it is because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared. And the Bible has told us that no man can see God face to face because you will die. So this man, is, is, it is like a thanksgiving, penal. This place is called penal because I have seen God face to face and my life has been spared. Some of us, our lives may not be spared. Jacob was lucky enough because his life was spared. Some people have lost their lives because of wrestling with God. You are a believer. You come to church many times, day in, day out. You hear sermons. You hear transforming sermons. God even touches you and tells you it is you. I'm talking about, but you continue wrestling with God. This man now, in, his, uh, in, in God's presence, he was limping. Some people have died. Why should you surrender after getting uh, a chronic ailment? Why should you surrender after getting a terrible accident? Why should you wait? for that point for you to surrender to God. God is saying he wants us to surrender to him so that he may break us. We are in this thing not because of ourselves. We are here because of even our children, our generations. God wants to use our children, our generation, and he's calling upon each one of us to break and to surrender to him. What is your name? What is your name? That is the question God is asking. I want the choir to come here. I want each one of us to surrender.